So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the EIT Digital Master School Data Science Info session today. This session is supposed to be one hour long and uh, we have a lot more registration coming in, so I expect people will join slowly, but till then we can we can already start this session. As you know, uh, we have our master's school program uh, opened in two different phases, and the first phase ends, the application phase ends on the 3rd of February in a roughly two weeks time. So this is just crucial that you, you finalize your application on time, and we are trying to organize sessions dedicated to each of the program within the master school. So that you know, uh, next week on the 24th on Tuesday at 3 p.m. we are going to have a so-called general info session with the title Ask Us Anything. So this is a session dedicated to all those who would like to be part of the master school program, but perhaps still don't know which program they would like to choose or they have any kind of questions related to the programs or to the applications. And then in two days later, there is going to be uh, a master school office organized session actually on the technicalities and the practicalities to make sure that your application uh, is meeting the requirements of the procedure. So that's on the 26th and that's organized by the master school office. And we have Ellen Carlson as a representative from the office, but I'm sure you will uh, meet with her at, at least virtually in the Q&A session. As right now, I would like to give the floor to Salvatore Mocha, who is the head of the Master's School program, to, with a few opening words, uh, start the session, and then we can kick off um, the data science over you. Salvatore. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Good afternoon and welcome to everyone. And it's a pleasure for me to start this webinar today and also having the pleasure to have uh, the program lead of data science, that it's uh, our biggest program here, and also some of the professors participating into the program. It's uh, always a pleasure to meet you. So uh, let me just share with, uh, with you some of the key elements of our master program. And let me also clarify to you why my, our master program is different from the others. So first of all, if you study with us, you will get two master degrees, one from your entry university and another one from the exit university. And the second point important that, and this is the uniqueness of our offer, is that between the first and the second year, you will get also a minor in innovation and entrepreneurship. So this is the big difference between our offer and all the other offers that you can find on the market. You will not get only two master degrees in <clears throat> in tech, in this case in data science, but you will get also a minor in innovation and entrepreneurship. So I, let me also share with you some data regarding the past students. We have 15, 20% of former students that they started their own startup. Why? Because we give them the opportunity to also grab this tech, uh, these uh, business skills that they need to, to develop a startup. And also another important element is that we have a strong alumni community, a strong alumni community composed by more than 2000 students, former students that is always open to help you. And this is in, in reality, what does it mean? In reality, it means that uh, all our students 96% of our former students, they get a job offer before leaving the master's. And also the average, the salary of it's uh, usually it's higher compared to the average of the similar positions in Europe. And do you know why? Because companies are looking, especially now are looking not only for people with tech skills, they are looking for people with tech skills that understand also a market, they understand the product, they understand the dynamics of the strategic forces operating right now. And so all those elements combined together, they, the result is that this unique product that today we are going to present to you. Thank you very much and welcome again to this webinar. Please, Marta, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Salvatore, thank you all for attending the meeting. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay. okay, I'm going to share a presentation. Uh, I took the liberty 
to ask the former program lead to, to share the, the presentation she did previous years, uh, similar to what it has been presented. Tina, can you see the presentation, right? Can you see the presentation? Yes. Can you yes. see the? Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm Marta Patiña, and the new program lead for data science. Uh, I'm professor at Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, and I've been working in this program from the very beginning, from the time we we wrote the proposal, uh, some time ago already. So we started with this uh, master program. The first year was in 2015. Okay, so seven years ago, eight years ago. So I'm going to recall a little bit what uh, Salvatore mentioned about the structure of the of the program. I don't know if you are aware of um, the structure of the master program. Uh, it's a two-year um, program, so basically you do one year in what we call entry university, in one university, and then the second year uh, you move to a different university, what we call exit university. Okay, so it's, uh, as it was said before, a unique opportunity because you will be studying in two different institutions. Okay, so during the first year, um, basically we concentrate on technical uh, background related to data science. So there is a common base, we, we say, um, related to, to data science, and then uh, some courses for I &E. Okay. Um, in principle, there is a, a common a common core, but the courses may be slightly different from one university to another university during the entry year. But uh, in principle, we cover uh, the same topics. Um, the master program is uh, 120 SETCS, so during the first year you need to do 60, which are uh, composed of this uh, technical background, I &E, innovation entrepreneurship courses, a business development lab, and a summer school. The summer school that is in between year one and year two, uh, it belongs to the first year in terms of credits. Summer school is an activity I will describe a little bit more later, uh, that is done in a different place. They are organized every year uh, around Europe. And students go, uh, they are given the, the option to, to choose where they, they want to, to, to attend the summer school. And um, there, is, there are a few challenges you need to participate in. And this is accounted as part of the first year for ACTCS. Okay. So then in the second year, you will move to the ACID University where uh, you will work uh, more on a specialization on data science. Each university is offering a different uh, specialization. We will see this later. And this is uh, courses for 24 ECTCS. Then we continue with the innovation and entrepreneurship uh, uh, courses, hands-on experience. And finally, you need to do a, a master thesis that is uh, accounts for 30 CTCS. So it is industry based. Uh, what we want to do is to, to do something that is meaningful for, for the industry, for the companies, but at the same time, it has a challenge from the point of view of uh, data science, or you can apply the knowledge or create new knowledge you have. Um, uh, been uh, studying during these two years, and um, you need to do an internship in a company. So during the first, second year, uh, you start uh, looking for the companies on, on the field, find a uh, reasonable, something that is interested, uh, interesting for you, uh, has uh, uh, a challenge in the uh, in, in terms of data science applications or new knowledge or uh, related to data science at the end. And then when you finish, you will be granted the two uh, bachelor degrees, the one from the entry university. If you go to, I don't know, Politecnico in Milano, you go to ELTES, uh, wherever it is the university, you, get, you will get um, a degree from that, master degree from that university. And also the master degree from the ESSIT University. And then uh, an EIT certificate. 
uh, stating that you were an EIT student. So for this, there are several events, the kickoff event, where all master students, not only the ones that are doing uh, data science, but other specialties, specializations, they, they attend. And also for the uh, summer schools, again, you will, uh, you maybe with other, uh, together with the students for another uh, specializations and work with them. And finally, you will meet all of them at the graduation ceremony. So it's uh, a lot of networking, meeting new people uh, besides uh, working, hard working and starting to pursue your master degree. Uh, Salvatore mentioned why, why, why are you going to choose uh, EIT Digital and a master program in EIT? More concretely, I will talk later about data science. Uh, I think it is a unique opportunity. It was mentioned before. Uh, of course, the two degrees is something interesting and very relevant for some people, for some careers. Uh, you will choose your own curriculum in the sense that uh, you are not tied to a single university where everything is uh, defined here. Uh, you have the chance to pick uh, an entry university with some courses and then select the, the specialization, the path you, you want to follow in your career. So it's uh, more open and broader than other that if you go for a traditional master program. I and &E, innovation and entrepreneurship, this is uh, something that makes uh, the program also unique. Um, how to develop uh, an idea that uh, you had, how to make this a product. So many of you probably are engineers or people with a computer science, math background. So maybe you have great ideas, but we don't, or you don't have the knowledge uh, to, if it is, uh, to know if it is interesting, how to make it a product, what you should look at. So this is a very relevant, uh, information of relevant courses and experience you will get in the master program. But not only if you plan to start your own uh, company, but also uh, working for any company, you will do innovation or is uh, relevant for all the companies in order to be competitive, to, to do innovation. And innovation is uh, made uh, great ideas to become products and that are being affected. So either if you uh, think you are going to create your own company or you want to have a different kind of job uh, in, in another company, it's uh, very relevant to have the knowledge uh, for uh, innovation and this and entrepreneurship. So the other opportunities I mentioned, the IAT Digital uh, Summer School is uh, a good opportunity to collaborate with other colleagues, uh, colleagues from different countries, from different backgrounds, and as it was mentioned before, the alumni uh, network that at the end uh, could be very helpful or maybe very helpful in your career. So data science. Mm. Maybe you know something about data science, just uh, a, a quick overview about the data science program and what is data science. So you know that uh, we are generating data. Uh, when I say we, it's uh, every person, every system, every activity we do basically is generating uh, lots of data. And the data has, of course, a value, but the, the value comes after uh, we analyze the data. Okay, we need to, to understand the data. Uh, first, to store the data, how to deal with the amount of data that is being produced uh, everywhere. Every time we connect to, to the internet, to, we look for something. We have the um, our watch, our mobile phone, smart uh, mobile phone, and so on. Uh, we're generating data that can be analyzed and probably we can get uh, some information that is at the end the value. Uh, we can have about the we can get uh, from the data to, uh, to do better products, to do uh, to improve quality of living, and to have uh, uh, systems that are uh, much more uh, interesting, can do many things for us. So um, at the end, what we need to do uh, to, to do in data science is uh, to deal with the data, analyze the data, and then once we analyze the data to understand the value of the data. Um, for that, we need to, to have knowledge in different fields. 
And what is uh, also relevant is that we are going to work in a in 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 an environment that is uh, multidisciplinary because at the end we need to apply these techniques uh, to to a given domain. So, so what is new in in data science? This is one of the many pictures uh, that are uh, available about uh, data science. Where is data science? And at the end. I would say that is in between statistics, computer science, and the minor expertise. This is uh, when we have these three to, uh, things together, we we are able to analyze the the data, get uh, information about the data. Uh, we know how to deal with programs to analyze the data, store the data in a relevant time uh, period of time, and we can apply this to to a given domain. Then this is data science. There are uh, different combinations that you can see here statistics with uh, uh, computer science then we have machine learning and we can somehow discuss uh, about different aspects of data science but at the end you will be familiar with uh, all these uh, different aspects so uh, many of the techniques that uh, you will learn have been with us for a long time. Uh, statistics is not something new, artificial intelligence, machine learning, so computer science, of course. So what is new is the ability to store this data, to, to handle the data in an efficient way, to analyze the data, and to extract conclusions in, in reasonable uh, time. So computer science, the 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 prices the cloud computing environment so we don't need even to to buy the the computers make uh, data science a, a growing and feel uh, every day right so it is also very relevant and i mentioned before that we need at the end to 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 get information out of the data and and information that is uh, correct. Uh, so uh, is um, one of the things you, you need to learn is when we analyze the data, we analyze the information or we do forecasting predictions. We need to, to, to understand what we are doing. Uh, here we have a few samples of uh, wrong decisions, wrong conclusions that uh, uh, have been made uh, at a very uh, relevant level. So this is the sample from Facebook that uh, was uh, labeling images of black men as primates because the the, the algorithm that was uh, distinguishing between uh, was uh, trying to to find people in, in the images was wrong. So black people were uh, labeled as primates. Uh, other examples of wrong decisions, wrong information uh, is the in healthcare, the has been found that some algorithms, they, uh, they were called racists because the black people were affected by the decisions. So another example here is uh, from statistics also is uh, two variables, that is the revenue generated by arcades, by gaming, and the number of PhD degrees that were awarded in the US. So one may think that they are correlated because they grow at the same pace. Uh, so one conclusion we can make out of this that, of course, it is wrong is uh, there are more gamers and uh, there will be more uh, doctorates awarded. Right? This is wrong. So we need to understand uh, the correlation, the statistics, how the data is related to each other, how the algorithms decide. And uh, this is a topic that is now very very fashionable that is uh, explainable artificial intelligence um, ethics about the algorithms you you always uh, we heard about the algorithm that decides something to hire people uh, recommend ads to to watch a movie so we need to understand and uh, it is our our topic to to provide uh, information that is uh, correct and that domain experts and other people can understand what is behind these decisions that are made by the by the analysis we google me so coming back uh, to the to the master program um, 
for the entry year, as I said before, um, this is done in one university and then you need to select the entry and the exit. So there are several options where you can choose for the entry and for the exit. Not all universities that offer uh, entry, uh, they offer an exit. So some of them, they they do both the entry and the exit, but not all of them. And the other way around, there are exit universities that they don't implement the first year the entry. Okay, so um, we have Sweden, Spain, France, uh, you have the details of all universities. They are a century and an exit. For the second year for the exit, there is, uh, as I mentioned before, the specialization uh, in the sense that uh, there are different courses. The first year, although the courses are maybe slightly different, uh, the contents are and the topics covered are similar because it's uh, what we call the core of data science. But during the second year, uh, the courses will be different uh, because there is a specialization in, as uh, I showed the picture before, uh, each university decides or decided at some point what are the, the the relevant courses they can offer for for the master program so we, i can read then we have kth uh, distributed systems and data mining uh, upn university of politica madrid infrastructure for large uh, um, scale data management and analysis alto university big data management machine learning uh, Code d'Azur, multimedia, this is also very, very relevant. Sometimes we are thinking about data that is numeric data or data uh, that is, uh, I mentioned before, images. Uh, this is uh, also a topic uh, to analyze and to get a lot of information out of images, uh, audio and other uh, formats of information. So Code d'Azur, University Code d'Azur is specialized on multimedia and big data for multimedia. Uh, LTE, real-time data analysis, I said before that is important to uh, what it is new is that we can make the decisions, analyze the data nowadays uh, in a reasonable period of time. This reasonable period of time sometimes is uh, real-time. We need to decide now or in a few minutes, uh, not uh, tomorrow, uh, wait until tomorrow until we run uh, the models uh, we are we are using. Then we have uh, University of Paris with natural language processing. This is also a very relevant topic nowadays. We have these personal assistants that they understand, they listen to us and they understand and they can do few things for us. So uh, this is the specialization of University of Paris at Clay, uh, University of Trento, big data variety and veracity. It is very relevant, I mentioned before, to make uh, uh, decisions that are right, uh, but uh, uh, it's also relevant that the models and the data uh, we are using, uh, they are not uh, somehow polluted. Uh, so some people, they, some people, some uh, hackers or other uh, people, they, they can generate data on purpose, that is uh, fake data, in order to make uh, the models to, to take wrong decisions, even if we train the data, the models before. So uh, this is uh, also a relevant topic for um, analyzing data. Uh, University of 20, uh, how to apply data science in the context of uh, persons, what are the decisions that are relevant for uh, gathering information from, from the behavior of persons and providing assistance to persons. Uh, University of Rennes, more concentrated on artificial intelligence and data mining. In Turku, uh, universities uh, applying data science to the field of uh, medicine. Okay, so this is the, the specializations that are available nowadays. As I mentioned before, one of the events that is happening at the end of the second year and accounts for for its CTCS is the summer school that is last uh, for two weeks. Again, you will go to a different location that is mm, probably not uh, in the country where the and you did the entry, you will move to different place. Maybe it's the same country where you will do this, but could be different. So where you are 
uh, you face, you have provided a, a business challenge, a business case, and then there is a competition, uh, different teams are, organi are organized, and of course you need to do a final, not only the pitch, the competition there, but also a final report in order to account this uh, activity in your transcript of records for the future. Uh, careers. It was also mentioned before the number of jobs in this topic is, in this topic is increasing. Maybe you don't find data science uh, only, but also all the fields that I mentioned before that are uh, uh, part of data science on how related to data science, data analyst, data engineer. Um, this is only growing every day. Uh, there are more and more demand for this type of uh, uh, graduates. Um, they are working our former students in all relevant companies you can imagine. Uh, something probably Spotify is one of the companies people at some point they like more, but to name one of them that is uh, somehow very interesting for many people, but uh, there are many uh, startups uh, that uh, were created uh, as part of this program and other programs, universities, small companies, uh, large companies where uh, all our graduates are, are working uh, with very competitive uh, salaries and in very relevant positions where you can do uh, new products, new innovation in the companies. So this is a summary uh, to, to remind you that uh, this is, as we said at the very beginning, this is a new, unique program uh, with the international experience you will get. Uh, you will meet uh, new people for sure, uh, very relevant people from different cultures, different countries. Uh, the innovation and entrepreneurship minor is uh, very relevant if you are interested in, in innovation, even if uh, or creating your, your own company. And um, it's also important to take into account that uh, there are uh, some grants, some financial support for these activities. The, the, the summer school is, is paid and other activities are also paid by the by the master school and their grants for study. So you will get more information. It was mentioned also before that the second period is going to finish in a few days. Um, the scholarships that are available, you will get more information on the master school webpage. And just to, to, to tell you about uh, things we will look uh, when we evaluate the candidates for for the for the admission. So uh, we're looking for people with a bachelor degree in computer science, math. Those are the the main uh, degrees uh, that uh, um, that uh, are in the master program. But uh, we look into 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 their uh, profiles. Uh, so it's, uh, we're looking for people that uh, is motivated. So the motivation letter is uh, very relevant. Your previous experience, if you have an entrepreneurship idea, entre uh, an idea product you want to to make. So it's important the motivation letter. Your background, if you did some computer courses, computer science courses on statistics, doesn't matter if you got a different degree. So we will evaluate uh, the courses you you have taken. Your experience. Some people already work has some experience. They have been doing internships or working in a company. So it's also relevant. Uh, the master is in in English. All all the courses, uh, everything is in English. So. Uh, the proof of English is also the first barrier you need to uh, to to pass somehow. And then the the second phase where we evaluate the candidates, we look at the degree, the motivation, and experience from from students. And of course, you have all the information in the master school, the web page, and more. Uh, Links will be given probably later. Uh, if you need some information regarding the data science program, I can, will be happy to, to answer your questions now or later. So thank you. That's all from my side.
thank you, Professor Marta Patino Martinez. It was a thorough overview and presentation on the program itself. And of course, welcome you, to Marta. the program. As you have been just starting as a program lead, so so welcome you again at the IT Digital. And what we do right now is that we invited someone already uh, familiar with the program of data science, a so-called student ambassador, who will talk about the experiences um, during the years at EIT Digital. And that person is uh, Beatrice Insalata. I hope the spelling and the pronunciation is correct. Hello, Beatrice. Hi, everyone. Hi, can so you hear me? Yes, we can. And thank you for joining. And you know, you have heard Marta's presentation on the program itself. And I would like to learn more about the student perspective. So how you have, you know, grown during these during this time at EIT Digital. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for having me today, and thank you all for joining us. And uh, I am a first year EIT Digital Master's student in the Data Science program, and I'm currently studying my first year in Politecnico di Milano, which is a university in Italy. And then my second year, I will go to study in KTH in Sweden. And let me tell you that I was in your same exact situation last year that I was very indecisive about what my like future choice for completing my education would be. And I like started to evaluate every choice I could have for choosing my master's degree. And when I uh, started to learn something about EIT digital programs, I was hooked like immediately because uh, of mainly some things that are make it stand out for me uh, from all the others programs that you can find. And this is because of like some reasons like uh, the fact that it offers you a very thorough um, education about technical topics that you will have from a standard computer science master's degree like um, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, statistics, the computer science and all these topics that you can think of to be like a very well prepared data scientist. But it also uh, completes your formation with things like um, the business insight on uh, the matter, you know. So you have a broader perspective. Uh, your education will be completed from these things because you have also classes from the reason business innovation, startups and things like that. And also you will be able to take part in some extra activities that will um, really make you better in soft skills like teamwork, public speaking, things that you could not improve if you're doing a standard uh, technical degree. So you will be like a more complete professional in my opinion. And also another very important thing is the international experience that you will be able to take part in because uh, the first year will most likely as I said before be in a different place uh, that your second year will be so you will be able to meet a lot of people both from the events and from the uh, different uh, years of study and this will make you like form a network of people that are, everyone is very motivated very skilled very passionate about what they're doing and these things can make you like last you a lifetime and provide you with a very good experience. Uh, I cannot tell you much about the second year because as I said before, I'm still in my first year, but uh, everyone I talked about, um, a thing that I like suggest you doing right now is informing you about uh, the program. If you're interested in a specific university, talking to people like student ambassadors, we're here so we can answer your questions. Um, taking part into webinars like this, it's very, very informative. And uh, when I uh, took my choice and started the EIT uh, digital program in data science, I was super happy of choosing this because even if I only took a few courses, I can already taste the difference between a standard experience and a different experience. Like um, we took part in a kickoff event that this year was in Tallinn, and it was amazing because we met with a lot of people. We uh, went into contact with the Loni, and they were so very kind with uh, so. Uh, they like made you feel like we were part of all a big family, the AT digital family. And so I was super proud of making this choice. And if you have questions about the program, we're here to um, be here. With, so um, if you want to ask us anything, but I'm very proud of my choice and I can confirm this, you know. Okay, thank you so much, Beatrice. And sorry, I was wrong. I thought you were actually studied it, but you are still studying at the IT Digital. So it's an even you know, greater applause for you to, to make sure that you are here and you share your experiences, which are just super fresh. So now we would like to open up the floor in the Q&A session. 
And for that, feel free to ask any sort of questions you might have. So besides Professor uh, Patino Martinez, we have, of course, Beatrice here. We have Salvatore. We have Ellen Carlson from the Master School Office. And we have a few other colleagues joining from different universities across the ecosystem, uh, such as Zoltan Istanes from Alta University. And also we have Simon, Simona Motonia from Babesboy University, which actually doesn't have a data science program, but they are studying their cybersecurity program. So anyway, if there, you have questions. There is already a question in the chat. Sorry, I didn't see that. Thank you. OK. So the question is for the recording uh, purposes. Are applicants with a bachelor's um, mechanical engineering eligible for this program? Also, is there any minimum grade requirement in the bachelor's? I believe that's more for you, Aline, or? No, that's what Professor Martin has done. Okay. okay. So mechanical engineering, as I said before, you are required to have a number of ECTCS in computer science and statistics. Those are the requirements. So the knowledge and a number of ECTCS in in computer science, uh, like knowledge in programming courses, data management courses, uh, around 18 ECTCS in computer science, and some courses in statistics. So if you have this, you you can qualify to you can you have some chances. The the grades. Uh, are relevant, are important. So this is one aspect that is also evaluated. So it's not that there is a, a minimum in general, but uh, we try to to grab the the best students for the for the program. So the number of seats are limited. Each university is offering a number of places. So we try to to get the the top students, the ones they among the ones that are. Uh, among the applicants. So there is no minimum, but uh, of course we look into that. It's also a relevant aspect of the evaluation. Okay. That also answers to Adela Rubaldo's question on the same question, but in industrial engineering. And also to the question, uh, Robert Shellar, I have four years mechanical engineering degree from India and three years experience in data analytics and data engineering. I've already applied. Am I eligible? Yeah, uh, your CV will be evaluated all together. It's only it's not only the the degree on mechanical engineering, but also the experience. So three years of experience in data analytics and will be taken into account. So you will not be rejected immediately. Is uh, you are a candidate, right candidate? Uh, Doesn't question. mean that you will be affected, but uh, will be evaluated. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a question from Rashid Jain. I've already completed the application. Can you please elaborate on how to pay the application fee? Yes, I would be happy to take this one. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ian Kovson and I am the head of Master School Office. And uh, regarding the application fee, Upon submitting your application, you should have received a confirmation email that we have actually received your application. And in this email, it's also detailed the instruction on how to pay the application fee. In case you would for some reason not have received this email or cannot uh, find it back, then you can also go to the application portal and have a look under the tab that is called fee payment instruction. Under there, you find all of the instructions on how to do it, as well as information about the deadline, uh, well, which is the 13th of February. And that means that we need to have received the application fee by the 13th of February. So you need to transfer the money a few days before because the payment is made via bank transfer. So you have to take into account that it might take a few days or even in some cases up to a couple of weeks before um, the money has uh, reached our account. And it's important that you make sure to pay your application fee because your application will not be processed unless we have received this. 
So check if you have received the, uh, the, um, uh, the confirmation email and otherwise have a look under fee payment instructions. It's uh, a tab in the application portal. Thank you, Elin. Uh, maybe you could take the next one. I'm not sure, but let's try. It's a question from S. Uh, upon completing the masters, do we get any job seeking visas from the countries that we choose? So visas, uh, this is a question that we always refer you to the universities because this works differently in different European countries. Um, but your exit university uh, will be able to help you and guide you regarding this. And it is very common that our non-European students choose to stay um, mainly in their exit country, but also in the in the country where they did their entry year studies. Um, but your universities will be able to guide you through this so that you can secure um, a work visa. Thank you. And also there is one question, but perhaps best if we just put a link to it is from Hafiz Samar Mubarik. Uh, can you please elaborate on the scholarship special EIT digital scholarships and what does it cover? I will put the link here into the chat box, so not only Hafiz, but all of you can take a look at this, um, this box here. I would actually like to take the opportunity to share a few slides regarding that, because I know that this is a topic that is very um, important. Um, yes, so let's see, do you see um, some slides here now? We do, yeah. Perfect. So the scholarships, um, as you might have seen now on the website, uh, we do offer different kind of scholarships. So first of all, EIT Digital is offering scholarships to uh, our students. And these scholarships are mainly tuition fee waivers. So full tuition fee waiver or a half tuition fee waiver. And then there is a bunch of different other kind of financial support that you can get. I will go down to this slide now because here you can see a print screen from our website and as well the specific url to this page so here on this page you find all of the information related to scholarships that are offered both from eit digital but as well as um, companies that we work with and of course also from the partner universities um, there are partner universities offering full tuition fee waivers. They also offer allowances and all of this information can be found on this page. And I would also recommend you to just Google a little bit and see if there are any other country specific scholarships for the countries that you are interested in studying in, um, because there might be even more apart from the, the university specific ones that we have listed here. Uh, to apply for the scholarships. A few of these you apply for <laughs> for via the application portal, so together with your application for the program. So the EIT Digital Scholarship, you apply for it here. You see tab number four, EIT Digital Student Support. To apply for the EIT Digital Scholarship, you simply click yes here. If you are not interested, for some reason, for example, maybe you already have uh, another scholarship from um, the EU. Then you cannot apply and then you just tick no here. And then if you check further down here, this list goes a bit further down than just these three that I have included here. Here uh, there are some of the scholarships offered um, by the universities. And also there is something that we call the deferred tuition payment plan. And this is simply a way for you to study your whole masters and then pay the tuition fees afterwards. So this is basically like a loan that allows you to start paying back. Uh, well, for uh, six months uh, after you complete your studies at first. So if you're interested in some of these scholarships that are listed a bit further down here, then you will need to click on this edit button and then you will see that uh, you will be required to fill in some uh, additional information and in some cases also upload some additional documents. For example, for the deferred tuition payment plan, you will need to upload a credit report. Once you have done that, um, uploaded everything and ticked all of the required boxes, um, this um, checkbox will be marked that you have selected the scholarship. So 
first of all, have a look at the website here see which uh, scholarships that you are interested in. And then you can also see if you apply for it through the EIT Digital Application Portal, or if you simply go to the university's website or another external website. But there, start to check there for all of the information. I hope that's covered uh, most of the questions. And unless, uh, if it didn't, do you have any more questions? Just write them in the chat or, uh, or contact us as well at the, the Master School office. Thank you, Aline, for the slides. And yeah, I agree with Aline. So if you have any questions now on the scholarship, please put it into the chat box and feel free to, to check the link. Till then, I will just go back to a few questions. Um, there is one from Yashir Mohammed Suleiman Ahmed. How will be the evaluation of the language proficiency requirements in case the applications submitted with the Bachelor of Science certificate indicated that the program was in English language versus any other English proficiency certificate, for example, IELTS or some other certificate. Uh, maybe I should take this one. Um, so there are specific rules regarding the English uh, proficiency. So for all of the universities, um, the English proficiency can be waived in case your bachelor has been studied in a specific country, for example, Canada uh, or the US and a few more. And you also find all of this information on the website. But there is also university specific rules regarding this. So even if the country where you studied your bachelor is not included in that list that is general for all the universities, you can still check um, the link that says, um, I believe it says university specific English exemptions, something like this. It's available on the website. Uh, under there, you can see um, if the universities of your interest might uh, waive the English proficiency um, if you have studied in a, in a specific country. So have a look there. Thank you, Aline. Could you please also take the next uh, two, I believe. One from Arash Nadai. Does last, mas does last master's GPA mitigate for the bachelor GPA in regard to admission requirements? I believe that this might be a question a bit more for Martha. Yeah, yeah. Martha, OK, sorry. We look at both. OK, so we take uh, both. In so, but in general, uh, the, the, the bachelor is uh, has more credit, so principal could look at the bachelor, but also if the master is related to uh, to the topic, to data science, is also taken into account as part of the GPA. Okay, thank you, Marta. Um, there are two questions on regards uh, on the exit program. I will read both of them. One is from Asalman Mariam. Do we only get to choose the universities we want to study in during our application phase, or can we modify the exit university choice after starting a program? And there was one later. On, um, and there was one from Shao Zetang. In the presentation, uh, Dr. Marta, I saw there was an exit school of Paris Sakalai University for NLP specialization. However, I can't find that exit school info on the EIT Digital Master Master School webpage. Can we still choose the, Can we still choose it as an exit school for the application for EIT Digital Data Science to 2023? No, only what is available on the on the application page. Probably the it wasn't. I didn't update the the contents of the presentation, and this is one one mistake. So it's the only choices you can make are the ones that are available on the application web page. Okay, so it's I will it's a mistake. I will update it. And also another other one, if I may add, uh, on the slide, the uh, BME University from Hungary wasn't mentioned that as an exit, but you can also choose BME University, which is Budapest University, Budapest University of Technology and Economics, as an exit, exit program there. But as Marta said, yeah, please make sure that you choose according to the web page. Uh, the, 
the ones that are available are the ones on the previous slide where there was a list, not a specialization, but also the one with the map. That is the one yeah. that is in the web page of the master school. Would you mind uh, sharing it now, Marta, again, to make sure that we we have the... Um, I, I just added a link in the chat to the mobility ah, map. Indeed. Just perfect, okay. Okay, um, let me go back to... Yeah, that was all right. Uh, Wasama Sultan, is it possible that we can do both years in a single country? Sorry, I believe that we did not answer the question regarding the choice of universities, if it's possible to change it. Uh, from Asalman Mariam. Uh, I can just jump in and uh, answer this question that. Well, for the exit university, there is a possibility that you can change it later. Um, the entry university that you are assigned, this cannot be changed after you have received your letter of acceptance. But during your entry year, we have previously offered the possibility to apply for a change of exit. And this means yeah, that you have to apply for it. So both your new uh, exit that you're interested in and the, and the uh, original exit will have to approve this. So we cannot guarantee that you would be allowed to change. If I may say something, uh, as I said before, uh, the number of uh, available places at uh, each university is uh, predefined. So once the universities they have uh, the number of students they <clears throat> they plan, uh, they cannot accept more students. So it's not that we don't allow them, but sometimes there there is no availability of places when you decide to choose. So if you're not accepted in the first place in a given university, there are chances, but we cannot uh, guarantee that will be accepted the change for these limitations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kuba Bialcik, Bialcik uh, what is the difference between the first and the second period for applications? Is there a higher chance to be accepted if I apply in the first period? So one main difference is that I, and feel free to add any comments you, you might have, is that um, visa requirements takes takes a while. So if you are residing in the EU, or best to put it, if you have an EU visa already, um, then you are still on time with the application the period too. But it doesn't really affect the the chances if you get in or not. Um, the question again, sorry about uh, we can do both years in a single country. This is not the best possibility, I'm afraid. Um, usually this is one of the the main um, perks of the program, actually, that people can travel and then study in various places. So in, in best um, uh, best possibilities that you do your entry year in, in country A, then you have your summer school in country B, and you have your exit program in country C. So three countries already just for running the program. Uh, Bilal Maxod, can you please briefly touch upon the permitted work hours during the study and about TA, GA or RA ship opportunities and their benefits? I'm not really sure if I know TA, GA, RI, what, what they mean. Do, do you do or I should just ask Bilal to it's clarify? In our system, or it's in, I don't know. Better to clarify. Yeah. Research teaching. assistant, teaching assistant. Okay. Yes, yes. It's teaching assistantship, graduate assistantship, and research assistantship. Okay, so it depends on the university, but um, you are a student, so in principle you are not. Uh, depends on your visa and the requirements, but uh, is uh, is uh, you are a student at the end. So, for instance, at UPN there are lectures in the morning, so lectures are in the morning, so most of them in the afternoon. So it's a bit difficult to to work uh, and 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 be proficient in the studies. So, and it depends also in the type of uh, visa you have, if you are EU member or from different countries, so it's not something we can say that is full-time study, okay? Lectures are at least here during the morning and in the afternoon. Maybe you can organize and depending on your visa, you can work, some students work on, 
in principle is only for studying. And teaching assistant and so on, um, it depends again in the university. We don't have teaching assistants for master students. Okay, research assistants. We don't have this for master students. But it depends on the university again. There are different regulations in each country and university. Thank you. And there is one question added to Bilal's comment later on. Uh, please mention the acceptance rate for this program. I don't have the figures. Do you have a link something there? Do you know the acceptance? Sorry, um, I do not have the exact uh, figures on this. I don't know if uh, Salvatore would like to um, jump in here and comment. Yeah, uh, on average, I would say that uh, 60 percent of of uh, prospective students, they they are accepted. We still not accept, let's say, four out of 10 students. Yeah. Because of the problem of the, the English, the problem of the certificates, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. All clear, thank you. And also something related to experience one uh, from Sean Chan. Uh, how much does one's professional experience in the relevant field factor uh, into the admission process? Marta, I'm not sure if we can take this one. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, uh, I guess you don't have a degree on topics that I mentioned before, so that's the reason of this question. Uh, so, again, uh, what uh, we're looking at for people that has a computer science background and also statistics. So if in your experience, uh, you can show somehow that you were working on, on these topics because you will, you will follow the courses, regular courses at the universities. So if you don't have the background in some people, they don't know how to program. I don't think this is the, the case. Or some people, they don't have the knowledge on the statistics. They cannot follow the, the courses. It's a requirement in order to follow the, the program. So you need to prove somehow that uh, you have this, this knowledge through the explaining the, the experience you have, providing more information. Not some people they just say I was working in that company from this day to now as business analyst or whatever. Then you need to provide more information. There is a space in order to 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 explain what you did. So we can take this into account. Okay. Thank you. Um... There's one question from Arash Nedai. Should I, should I apply for the summer school that I want to participate before the 3rd of February? I guess this is only uh, possible later on. Uh, yes, I can jump in and answer this one. Um, so no, you do not need to apply for the summer school before uh, the application deadline here. Actually, if you are accepted to the program, then it's during your entry year, actually around uh, this time of the year, that uh, you will get to rank the priorities for the different summer schools that are available. And then you will receive information about which summer school that you have been assigned to later on during the spring, well, February, March approximately. Um, so this is not something that you need to do now. Thank you, Aline, but somebody's really really prepared to already participate in the summer school, which is as great. Uh, one question from Cuba, although I believe Marta has uh, mainly commented on this. So if there's anything you would like to add, Marta, let us know. So the question is from Cuba. Are entrepreneurship innovation business related subjects from my bachelor degree taken into the taken into account during the application assessment besides ECTS from technical subjects? Uh, this can be counted as experience, working experience somehow. It's not working experience, but it's part of your experience. But uh, as I said before, for the for the program, we look into the technical components in the, the core contents of the program, not in the innovation and entrepreneurship uh, 
experience. This is part of the working experience on how. Great, thank you. Um, one from Rohit Shalar. As an EIT student, can we avail international mobility semesters of the individual universities or we need to study for a year at the same university? For a year. One, one entry university, one exit university in between summer school. This is the, the mobility plan for, for students. From Arash again, what is the scholarship acceptance rate for accepted applicants? Uh, so uh, I can answer to this. Last year, I'm, I'm talking only about the 80 digital scholarship. Last year, 65% of our accepted applicants, they received a, an offer that it could be a 100% tuition fee waiver or 50% tuition waiver. But I'm talking only about the 80 digital scholarship. As Ellen was mentioning before, there is a long list of other kind of scholarships available for you. 65% of our students last year, they received a kind of 80 digital. Okay, thank you. And also from Rashi, although I believe the link Answers to your question, Rashi. Does the scholarship cover monthly allowance as well, apart from the tuition fee? Not the 80 digital fee, uh, not the 80 digital uh, scholarship, but there are some scholarship that they also allow a monthly allowance. So please check the list. For sure, there are some universities or companies offering uh, not only scholarship but also monthly allowances. One from Manas, and I believe this is the last one. Uh, what is the what is their document? Although I do not belong to the country uh, that is required to such a document, yet I have no check mark in my applications full up tab. Is this a reason to worry? This is not a reason to worry. No, <laughs> um, no, it will not be a check mark there um, for you. So don't worry about that. Bilal. Uh, question, are these required computer science fundamental courses should be necessarily university level courses or the requirement can be bridged through boot camp or certifications? In principle, they are um, uh, university courses. Uh, I mentioned before um, programming, uh, databases, operating systems, those topics. So. If you have a certification, uh, I mean the computer science uh, courses, uh, statistics is not computer science. It's uh, bootcamp. I don't think you will get some of this, or unless you participated in hackathons and things like that. Uh, and certifications will be taken into account, but the the level of uh, uh, the courses you know, uh, that are uh, given by universities is preferred to certifications, I would say. Yeah, so these count. So it's not a barrier, but uh, we, need, yeah. we need to know that you are able to follow the, the courses in, during the master program. Okay, all clear. Um, as a bridge last question, I believe, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, remind you, I will put the link here, to the uh, general info session we have next Tuesday in the 24th. So in between, if you have any questions you have, you know, it, it has been not answered or would like to learn more about other programs, please come and register. And meanwhile, I would like to thank you for coming also to Salvatore Mocha, Marta, pa Marta Patino Martinez, Beatrice Chain Slat, and of course, Shiv Alin Carlson to, to be here and answer all these questions. We do hope this was helpful for you so that you know this session will be uh, the session has been recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube, so you can rewatch it to check the answers if, if something wasn't clear. And in between, we're also ready to help you out with your application process. And one last thing to remember, the 3rd of February deadline for uh, phase one deadline, which is like a strict deadline to make sure that you submit your applications. So thank you again. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at the IT Digital Masters Group program and also next week on Tuesday, if you can make it. 
We look forward to see you. Thank you again and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.